and good morning everyone. I will share my screen now. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah. Can you go in okay. presentation mode? Okay. Yes. Thank okay. You. Thank you. So I will, um, today I will present a very basic level of uh, using uh, GPU in uh, each of the cloud. And then my colleague will present higher level of uh, using CPU. So <clears throat> at first, why we need uh, to use uh, GPU in cloud? Because now it's very, uh, GPU is very demanding. Many application wanted to use GPU, mainly application with uh, vector and matrix operation. Typically, uh, image processing, machine learning, deep learning, and soccer application uh, uh, very demand a GPU for yeah, operation. And also, many uh, commercial cloud provider can uh, provide uh, GPU for in your cloud, like Amazon, Google, Nvidia, and so on. In uh, EGI Fredic Cloud, we have a several uh, cloud provider with GPU. Uh, the first was our institute, uh, Informatics Slovakia, and also uh, Institute of uh, Physica Catabria, Spain, uh, NIP from uh, Portugal, CESnet from Czech Republic, and also several other. Uh, Preparing GPU and adding it in the is a vertical. So the list is not uh, completed. You can see the link where it has description of the uh, list of cloud provider and information related to every site in is a vertical for completed information. So how to use GPU in EJ Fredic Cloud. Uh, first of all, we need to have a, a cloud account in EJ Check-in. If you have a NOC uh, account, you can register in JITLIN, ITTBs, uh, IAI, EJ Uh Second, we need to be a, a member of a VO with a GPU supported because uh, the cloud provider will provide uh, access to certain use group is means uh, virtual organization in cloud, not for every individual user. So if you do not have a membership, you can join this uh, VO where I am the VO manager, I can grant you access for testing or uh, you can order access uh, with GPU instance via EJA marketplace. And third, you need uh, to have an application with GPU and preferably with in uh, Docker container format. So the usage is very simple. You can just log into the horizon dashboard, create a VM with GPU flavor and image. After that, you can log in and execute your application on the VM. And when you finish, you delete the VM and release the resources. So it's very simple. I can go to demo and step by step later. So at SAP in the previous slide, we have uh, one uh, view for testing, demo, and development purposes. Is supported on our cloud side. The information of the VO is uh, in the link, and you can join the VO via this link. It means that you have a, a EGI account, you click on the link, and you can uh, request access to the VO. This VO is not uh, intended for long term execution, just for testing, demo, and development. If you want to use uh, GPU for production, you should order some uh, GPU intensive via EGI marketplace, or you can negotiate with site directly. Uh, 
uh, for convenience, we have uh, created a VM image with Zebu driver and Docker uh, container. And uh, so you, when you have a uh, create a VM, you do not have uh, to install anything additionally. The, inf uh, the information of the V image is available in AppDB and it's included in uh, several uh, VO image list. If you do not want to use this uh, VM image, when you want to use our uh, VM image, you can do it too, but you need to install the Yibu driver after creating. And different Linux distro have a different way. For example, for in Ubuntu, you just run this command, sudo Ubuntu drive, auto install and install Yibu driver for you. After installing the Yibu driver, you need to reboot the VM <coughs> and uh, to activate the driver. So this uh, how to use uh, GPU in VI Frederick Cloud via OpenStack Dashboard. Every side have its own OpenStack Dashboard. <clears throat> open stack that bar so you can check the info in this uh, link to get your link for that bar for every side now uh, you can use a common dash bar for a different side as the uh, dash bar fake cloud in synergy doc one we you have a login in the dash bar you can long instance, select the flavor with GPU, select the image with GPU and LAN. It is on. Uh, you can use GPU with Azure tool in Azure Fedex Cloud, for example, for, via infrastructure manager. It means that it can create some uh, Kubernetes cluster with GPU. Uh, it's a screenshot where you can see uh, how to check the GPU uh, support for Kubernetes if you are infrastructure manager. <clears throat> One, you have a VM created, so you can run your application in the, on the VM. But I strongly recommend using Docker container for application uh, delivery because it's simple installation, it's avoiding software conflict, and it's uh, have a maturity to use container available. If you want to, if you do not use uh, uh, Docker container, so you have uh, to install many additional software by yourself, like CUDA library, TensorFlow, and different level. So with Docker, Docker container, we have an on to get you in one Docker image and you just execute it. For running the container with GPO, you can uh, execute Docker run and just add this uh, option GPU on and all the options are normally. It means that Docker run uh, some option called your customer command. If you look at all the version of Docker, you can see some uh, different syntax like Docker run, uh, runtime equal NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA Docker run and something like that. But uh, now it's the uh, correct uh, syntax should be Docker run and GPU on. So I can go to the leaf demo. Uh, uh, and uh, the requirement is yes, you must have uh, an account in EJI check-in, a membership of the VO, and ha have a same demo code with using TensorFlow. Let's say some, uh, the code is uh, demo.pi. And uh, your code don't have uh, anything related to GPU because the TensorFlow will take 
on care about using GPU. So it's the same code can use in without GPU or with GPU. If you do not have uh, some uh, demo code, you can type directly from uh, the tutorial, uh, obtain your flow. So I, yeah, my demo will type the code from this page. So how we can do it? First, I log in to my site. Uh, I search GPU Cloud via this link. And then I will create the GPU uh, VM with uh, this flavor, uh, GPU and this uh, Docker image. And uh, then just execute the code within on the VM via this command. So I can first go into the uh, dashboard. Can you see my dashboard now? Yes. Okay. So I just look in via EJ check in. So I have a other look in, so I just continue. So after login, I can see a screen like that as instances. So I can learn, create new instance, just give some uh, name. Just choose its image. image. We would uh, need to uh, use, uh, so I use uh, NVR Docker image that I said before. So yeah, click on and next. Next one, I choose flavor. So I will choose the flavor with GPU. It means that this one. And click next. And on other will be before. It's my uh, SSI cache for login to the VM. Co Configuration as the plan, metadata as the plan, and LAN instances. Uh, after la launching, I can assign the 14 IP to the VM. But now it take uh, one, two, three minutes to create. So I will continue my demo with the, another VM that I only created some uh, one hour before. It means that this demo zero one and widget IP address. Okay. So I can stop my uh, sharing my browser and I can share my terminal. So I can log into uh, the VM that I created before. And I have a demo code already copy. I can show the demo code now. It's just a simple code copy from a TensorFlow tutorial. So just uh, import TensorFlow, make some custom model, make some uh, training, and it's on. So I can execute your code. I will copy a paste. So uh, fast running Docker, you need to be sudo. Uh, you have to root, and you need to add this option. GPU on to using GPU, and I will use uh, TensorFlow with GPU uh, support and running the my code demo code.
sau ba giờ thai ai quên lock in second screen and execute NVRS me it will show you information about Yibo uses we can see information uh, that you have a GPU name type GPU utilization and so on because your code is still uh, not running it's still pulling the docker image so we will take uh, a little So because the uh, Docker container have uh, several uh, uh, hundred uh, megabytes, so we take uh, now the uh, code running. We are training. You can see the uh, the NVI uh, information. You can see the GPU is used for 25 percent because you have a very small demo code. You can and you can see the process that's using the GPU. Now the code has terminated, so the GPU is now zero and you have no process. I can start it again. We can see it's a uh, win activate again the. Uh, uh, process of the GPU. So it's a uh, first demo. I guess so you can see just using GPU is very simple. You do not have to make any complicated uh, programming just setting uh, the option for Docker container and it's on. Uh, now I will go with the, the second demo. The second demo will, will be using a uh, Jupyter with GPU in the uh, Azure Effect Cloud. The usage is uh, very similar. You can uh, use Docker run with GPU option uh, with, uh, with the uh, danger flow. And here is GPU Jupyter. And you need to uh, map the port for accessing Jupyter. So after running, you can need to Make a SSI uh, tunnel to for accessing the Jupyter. So I can check my uh, sec, uh, second uh, VM that I just cre created before. It's now uh, uh, running. You have my IP address will be this one 200. 34, okay. So I can share my terminal again. Thirty-four, yes. Okay. One again, I can execute the command uh, with Jupyter. Yes, uh, again, you, you just need to add this uh, GPU option and using GPU image is on. So, 
So it's a download in the image again. On second screen, I can uh, execute the uh, NVIDIA. You can see the GPU and now running process now. And I need the third screen for creating the third terminal for creating the SSI tunnel. So I can access uh, to GPU from my local browser. Okay, so I see it's been uh, dialogued, dialogued in the image. So if, why uh, later? If you uh, execute the second time, so the image already available on your VM, so it could be faster, but the first time you run in some Docker image, it need to, uh, you need to uh, download the image from a Docker Hub. After executing, you can see it's a link. I get copy this link and paste to my browser, and I can access to Jupyter. I stop my screen, share my browser again. So you, I, you can see, I can log in to the uh, Jupyter notebook, and here we have some uh, tutorial. You can click the uh, tutorial, uh, you can see, you can execute your Jupyter notebook using GPU. I can click Okay. Uh, I can check my terminal to see if yeah, Jupiter will use uh, the uh, uh, GPU. You can see that yes, now Jupiter uses using the uh, GPU with uh, Python. So it's simply uh, very simple. You can uh, just run Docker container with your code and uh, with GPU option and on you see some GPU with the uh, TensorFlow will take on uh, necessary thing relating to GPU for you. I can share. Here you can see it's uh, some training. So I go back to my uh, Browse uh, my presentation. So you can see that using uh, GPU in cloud is very simple. That uh, you do not need to learn how GPU working and so on. Just add some simple option and do it on. So it's a some uh, discussion. How fast is GPU comp in comparison with its GPU? If you want to shock and answer is I can answer very fast, but the long answer is it depend on my factor. It means that what algorithm is suitable for you in CPU? If problem size, for example, in my demo, I can use only twenty percent of GPU power because my problem is very small. So I cannot use on the power provided by depend on type of CPU and GPU if you faster. But uh, I can give some concrete number. 
even with standard game in CPU, it means that uh, NVIDIA GTs, uh, RTs, it's, it's relatively cheap, about uh, same hundred uh, euros. You can reach switch time faster, speed up than CPU. It means that if you have uh, some application, it's running one hour on a CPU, you can now just using CPU, you can run, execute it in 10 minutes. Uh, if your application take a witch, so you can reduce speed up to one die. It's very fast. And if you use some uh, specialized GPU from uh, NVIDIA by V100, uh, I100 now, it's still faster. But this GPU is very, very expensive. It's uh, 10,000 euros or more. So you can see some uh, experiences with you learn how people are testing GPU and uh, comparison with uh, GPU and so on. Here are some good lean uh, for testing with different speed up with different type of GPU and it's, it gives us some recommendation. Oh, which kind of GPU is suitable for your application? And one last uh, recommendation that you need to take care about GPU memory because GPU have a limited memory. It's about 10, uh, 24 gigabyte in the mass. And if you have a very, very big problem, it need 100 gigabyte more, you cannot fit it in GPU memory. memory so it, you cannot use the GPU. You need to scan your problem side to have uh, it fit in GPU memory. And it's also a short description how to change your code to using GPU. As your answer is not, you should not make some specific change in your code. You just choose library framework is supporting GPU and just change some parameter to then the framework to use is on. At you, I have shown you the lift demo specific code in your application. And the will be available for your application immediately. So thank you for your attention. It's uh, some uh, relatively uh, my presentation, and thank you. And and I should, if you have any question, please. Uh, thank you, Viet. Uh, so, any questions for? Uh, I, I I suggest we move the question at the end. I think now Alvaro uh, would like to present something. If not, so I will give. Yes, I suggest to have a row. So oh, thank you, Amaro. Can you can take? Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Right. Yes. Loud and clear. Okay. So let me share. So you 
manage them because of lack of knowledge or of lack of manpower to, to manage to manage them. Uh, obviously, this is in the context of the EOSC. Let me skip this uh, fast and let's uh, go here uh, to the machine learning development life cycle. If you are familiar with the development of a machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, deep learning application, this is nothing new. Um, whenever, if you are a data scientist, you will be working with some data that may contain some labels or not, and you may have a reference model, an application that you are building, uh, or you may be working from scratch. Uh, and once you have developed some initial model, uh, you perform the training phase uh, that normally requires access to a GPU or one or several GPUs or two other kind of, of accelerators. Uh, once this has been trained, you will evaluate the model uh, and repeat this cycle. I mean, creating the or updating the model training with different uh, hyperparameters or even different uh, data and then evaluation. And then finally, you will serve the, the model to, to the, you will offer the model to, to some users or to your colleagues or only to yourself. And then you can always um, publish this back to a model repository. Uh, this project that we present, that we developed, the Deep Hybrid Data Cloud, uh, covers all the development phases of a machine learning uh, application, uh, from the creation, update, and improvement of a model, training, testing, and evaluation, model deployment as a service, and the publication for sharing and, and reuse. Uh, this is nothing new. This uh, relates with the cross-industry standard process for uh, data mining. Uh, we cover several of these phases, the training and evaluation, model deployment, and catalog to share, to share applications. Um, one important thing is that uh, we believe that there are different users that uh, have different knowledge, and therefore they need to interact with different parts of the infrastructure and with different levels of abstraction. Um, all of the users have in common that they want to exploit or uh, uh, or, or interact with a artificial intelligence or machine learning model uh, that requires access to accelerators, namely to GPUs. Uh, we have these three categories of users. The first uh, user is the user that only wants to get the functionality of a model. I mean, they want, they want to make inferences, they want to make predictions uh, with a given model. Uh, they do not need to know anything from the underlying resources. They do not need to know how to deal with uh, all the instantiation, uh, configuration, and so on of uh, the virtual machines as we had explained before. Then we have the second category of users that are users that uh, have more knowledge uh, on machine learning and also on the domain that they want to that they are working on, and they want to retrain a given model with access to a GPU, obviously to make this uh, training. Uh, or retraining uh, efficiently, uh, but also they don't need to know or they don't want to know anything about drivers, configuring CUDA, frameworks, and so on and so forth. And then we have the third category of users that are users that are completely working, uh, that are working completely uh, through the whole machine learning uh, life cycle. I mean, they might be building the model from scratch, uh, doing the data selection, creating a different architecture. And normally these users have knowledge about uh, what they really need from the terms of infrastructure. And that's why we say here that they have domain knowledge, machine learning knowledge, and technological knowledge. So um, one uh, slide here just to say that uh, we are, uh, that we uh, have uh, developed uh, our solution relying heavily on Docker containers in order to encapsulate the user applications with the required environment. I mean, the machine learning frameworks, the required drivers, and, and so on, uh, that are automatically built and published uh, to the marketplace following a DevOps approach without the user intervention. Whenever there is a new version of the code, this is automatically performed. Uh, and this allows us to execute the application everywhere. Uh, I mean, if you have Docker available, you can always execute it. If you don't have Docker, for example, because you go to an HPC uh, facility, uh, you can use uDocker 
to execute uh, these applications. Uh, and even the deployment in serverless uh, infrastructures like Apache OpenWhisk or AWS Lambda or uh, the Oscar service that was developed by UPP and that was presented, if I'm not mistaken, in other, in other webinars. Um, so the services that we are offering to the users in order to get access to accelerated computing in the cloud uh, following a platform access level are three are the deep catalog where the models are published so that they can be shared and reused, the training facility where the training is uh, being performed, and the deep as a service uh, where the services, the models are deployed as, as services. Starting from the less, uh, let's say, less uh, infrastructure to the uh, highest level of abstraction, uh, the users that uh, only want to get a model or to get some model functionality, where they would go is to the deep marketplace where uh, we have ready to use applications. It, it looks like, uh, like this. So you can go to the marketplace, you can explore the applications that are there, the models that are there, sorry. Uh, you can always go, no, go to the know more uh, that you have uh, this rich metadata. Uh, for example, this is an object detection, a classification with the PyTorch. It detects objects or in, 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 in images using different, uh, different models uh, um, pre-trained with the Cocoa dataset. Uh, in this case, we can go with our, to our laptop. Uh, you can, for example, use UDocker. I have a UDocker here. Uh, install in this virtual environment, uh, you can do, do this UDocker pull that will get the Docker container, UDocker create, it will create uh, the needed container for UDocker, it will run, and then you will get this in the, in the console, in the terminal. So if you go to the API documentation, that is to this uh, very first URL that appears in the bottom of the screen, what you will get is something like this where you can get access to a web uh, interface that provides functionality, the, the, that interfaces with the functionality provided by the model. And then you can make a prediction. For example, if we send this uh, image of a bedroom, uh, this model detects that this is a bedroom. Okay, this is nothing surprisingly here, but the important point here is that, uh, okay, you have done this in the laptop, but you can get this very same, uh, functionality in the cloud exploiting uh, transparently the AGI federated cloud resources with access to GPUs. Uh, and for this, we leverage the automatic deployment of these modules uh, into uh, serverless uh, into serverless infrastructures through the deep as a service component that uh, looks like this. Uh, you can go to deepas.deephybriddatacloud.eu and you will get this interface, but also you can get this uh, interface from the marketplace. Uh, this is the same entry as before, uh, where you can see that uh, this has one tag that is pre-trained here at the, at the top of the screen, and then you can try it uh, live. Okay, this beta label, this is an old screenshot, this beta label is not there anymore. And you can go to the web UI, click there, and you will get this very same interface where you can make the prediction. Right now, even though the interface looks the same, the prediction will go to the cloud transparently. So you can don download a model to your laptop, you can execute it there in order to test that the model works, or you can go directly to the cloud uh, exploiting uh, the AGI federated cloud resources. Uh, and the last part that I'm going to show here is uh, how we actually exploit the resources, the GPU resources that are present in the EGI federated cloud in order to perform the most uh, compute consuming part of the machine learning life cycle. That is how we perform a machine learning training in the cloud. For this, we uh, have the developed a training dashboard where uh, you can go and get one-click development environments or one-click training environments for existing modules. Um, if you go to the training facility, to the training dashboard, sorry, you can either create an environment here in the, at the top of the screen or you can train 
a module here for any of the existing existing modules. Uh, I would like to show you this live, but unfortunately, the authentication system uh, is down. Uh, the, this is a distributed uh, platform, and the authentication system is located at Italy, and they have a problem uh, at INFN NAV, and they had a problem in their data center. Therefore, uh, it cannot be. I cannot show you this uh, live, but I think that I can show you uh, this uh, uh, video if I'm able to open the link. So, I hope that you still can see the video, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So it is one minute video. What I'm going to show you here is how we can get access to a Jupyter environment, Jupyter lab environment uh, using the dashboard uh, with access to GP. So we go to the training dashboard, we log in into the EAM. As you can see here, you can go to the development environment. It will bring us to a configuration screen where we can say what we need. We need a GPU, okay. We need to specify the, a password, okay. We don't need to touch anything else. We can uh, perform automatic uh, scheduling or manual scheduling. For this, uh, we are just showing that we can select one uh, individual provider. Uh, we can create the deployment and as you can see it is creating it has completed therefore we can now access to the Jupyter lab uh, thing with the password that we have uh, put beforehand and we can get access to this uh, Jupyter lab where we can uh, get the uh, TensorFlow. Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes, but not your screen. Okay, because I don't know what happened, but uh, sorry, something happened with the browser. Okay, so sorry for this interruption. Okay, so we're back. Okay, so I think we were here. Sorry for that, but something happened in the browser that uh, some sound started to, to play. So as you can see here, you can get uh, this environment where uh, obviously, well, TensorFlow is, is installed. This is a development environment where we can uh, get, uh, well, where we have all the relevant uh, libraries uh, installed. So now going back, um, Going back, where is the screen? Going back here, now the last part, the last part is, okay, this is a development environment with access to, to GPUs through uh, one-click deployment, uh, but you can also perform these uh, trainings uh, once the model is, is installed, you can, is, sorry, is in the marketplace, you can automatically do a training. Therefore, you can uh, download it and the dashboard has uh, a history of all the trainings and the, the parameters and the results, as you can see uh, here in this, in this screen. Um, uh, let's skip this, 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 uh, this. Well, this is, let's this explain this briefly. As you can see, we're exploiting an API uh, in order to offer the model, the model functionality to the users in a uh, standardized and common way. 
so that anybody that is developing applications that exploit machine learning models know the API semantics beforehand. An example of this is uh, since we are offering all the models with the same API, we were able to create a, a mobile application generator that automatically generates uh, applications that exploit this API in order to perform predictions in a variety of things. For example, here you can see that uh, uh, this is an application that was automatically built to uh, recognize uh, plant images. But uh, since the API is known, uh, as I said, in advance, we can create applications automatically for uh, making inferences on, on any kind of, of data. So just as a summary, uh, as I said, uh, we have we, we covered with these high level uh, models uh, that are focused on, on machine learning. We cover the whole machine learning development life cycle. We provide access to uh, GPU resources transparently uh, for, the, for the users without needing to know anything about uh, drivers, NVIDIA, uh, CUDA versions, uh, frameworks and so on and so forth uh, with this set of services, the cap the open catalog training facility and, and, and deep as a service. Uh, this is in production. Uh, uh, we released the second uh, software uh, release in January 2020 uh, and it's in production and can be used uh, for, for any uh, development activity that you may have. Uh, so just uh, I will leave here the links uh, where you can get uh, access uh, to this uh, training facility through the EOS portal, the individual entries for the deep uh, services, also some documentation and playlists with more videos and, and, and demos. Uh, so that's all. I don't know if you have uh, any questions, but uh, if so, uh, just let me know. Sorry for not uh, being able to show this live, but, but as I said, since the authentication system is uh, unfortunately uh, down, uh, I cannot show uh, this uh, live, but only through a recorded uh, thing. Thank you. Thank you, Alvaro. Don't worry for this. It's uh... well. Things that happen exactly. So we know. I I dropped the, my connection. I was dropped by my connection today two times. So also for this. So. Uh, okay. So it's time for question now. If you have any question you want to ask directly, I see Viet already answered a couple of them. So thank you. Uh, so please. Uh, now your mic is uh, is on. In principle, you can uh, raise your hands, or you can um, automatically switch on your mic and uh, ask directly. If you have any comment, question to Alvaro and yet. Don't be shy, of course. Because, uh, I prof, I invite you. Okay, there is a comment from in the chat. From Gianni. Gianni, do you want to um, post directly your your question? Okay, so I think this is a question for uh, for me, right? Uh, right now here for us there is nothing vendor specific uh, I mean we we are leveraging docker containers and therefore adapting from one vendor to another is quite uh, straightforward as a matter of fact we have uh, also pilots for uh, using FPGAs not NVIDIA cards uh, and also we have uh, completely vendor agnostic things like uh, scikit-learn, for example, or XGBoost. So in the end, we rely on the on the framework that the user is, is using. If they go with TensorFlow and GPU, uh, we obviously stick to NVIDIA uh, GPUs, but uh, there is nothing that prevents us for that, that sticks us to, to a specific vendor.
Yeah, thanks a lot. Sorry, I, I was attaching the, the microphone. <laughs> Uh, okay, there is also another question, probably, uh, what's about the training for large sites of data? I think uh, it's a re re referring to the deep uh, training platform, I'm not wrong. I don't yes, know. For, for, for this thing, we, we did not uh, develop specific services, but we have relied on services that have been developed in other uh, parallel projects like Extreme Data Cloud, uh, where we leverage it uh, one data for storing the user data and accessing it uh, through the training facility. And right now we will work with uh, EGI in the integration with the EGI Data Hub for the very same uh, topic. Yeah, I would like to remind that, uh, okay, starting from January, there is a new project, a uh, new flagship project for EGI and uh, this uh, deep uh, uh, the solution introduced by Alvaro will be part of the project. So we will continue this integration in the context of EGI in 2021. Okay. Um, Thank you, Alvaro. Uh, are there any more questions you want to ask? Okay, okay. I can answer a question about FPGI. Sure. Uh, we can use it in the cloud, but as so far, it's no provider have it attached in uh, the uh, cloud size. Oh. Okay. And uh, Piet, I have a question to you because you mentioned that in the AppDB there is already a virtual appliance uh, which contain all the library, Docker, etc., which is based on CentOS 7. Uh, are you planning to update these uh, virtual clients in order to support, for example, CentOS 8, because uh, uh, probably this will be... Uh, this was requested, for example, by one uh, another community uh, to, to use this particular uh, software uh, open, uh, operating system as a distribution. So I was wondering... Uh, yes, we, we are planning to... Uh create new uh, image with the uh, CentOS 4 on so is uh, Ubuntu okay. from the new year. But anyway, if you use uh, Docker container, it's not depend on the hot operation system at all. Because yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So it's five minutes uh, past 11. Uh, I think if you have uh, one last comment or question that you want to raise, otherwise I suggest that we close the webinar. Okay, I don't see any other question in the chat. No uh, people that want to ask directly. So I think, okay, we can close uh, the webinar, the last webinar for this year. So I thank you again, the speaker, it was very interesting talk. Uh, and uh, all of you with, uh, for attending this, uh, this uh, uh, section. Uh, Raluca, I see your mic is on. Do you want to ask something? Uh, no, I am okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you everyone again and uh, have a good uh, day. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you for organizing bye. and bye-bye.